but it doesn't bother me actually I really like it kind of up there by myself doing what I got to do kind of like basically look at the ground and then basically hey you know you hold on you're scared you're gonna get hurt before I got on this job I was scared of heights but now I'm not scared of heights and that's when the problem comes when you feel comfortable working with heights you start to get really comfortable and I know that's not a good thing to be honest with you whenever I'm up on the iron I'm always scared and if anybody ever tells you that they ain't scared, they're lying to you. You get used to it, and then uh, you're not aware of the danger that's, that surrounds you. I've done my share of stupid stuff with close calls. And, and you get into a bad habit, and you keep on letting it go, and then somebody gets hurt. In one second, you make a mistake. Big mistakes. Things just change in a heartbeat. It's minutes and seconds that make the difference. Huh? And, and that could be the last mistake that you make. You don't want to go back and tell his wife, you know, that John's not coming home today. You know, I don't want to make that call or, or go to her funeral. I said, it's the last thing you want to do. And everybody agrees. He had a fellow down a local 11 who was called off the building for coffee. He unhooked, turned, and fell seven stories. I remember that day, I remember that call, I remember just standing there in shock. He turned around for five minutes and his, his buddy, buddy fell 60 or, 60 or 90 feet onto the concrete floor of the anchorage, you know, killed him. But that didn't even prepare me for what I saw when I got there. He growled and so we, we, we said he's alive. He rolled his head and growled and, and you know it was gruesome and he was shooting blood out of his head six feet. And we, I picked him up, and uh, my partner cut him down. We laid him down, and all we had was a pair of dirty gloves to hold his forehead together. The man who was dangling couldn't hold on any longer, and he fell, and everybody could hear him scream those 10 floors, and he hit concrete. Blood gurgling on the oxygen mask when it was put on. I don't think uh, that's something I'll ever forget. The man left tipped, and he came down, and it killed him, and he left three daughters and a wife, and he died before his mother. When he left, you know, we had a good sense that he was going to be OK. He wasn't. It's very uh, disturbing and hurting, you know, to know that he did have family, you know. It was just a horrible, horrible feeling. They died. You know, and a part of me died. And it was, it was hard. It's still hard. It's hard to talk about. I can see it vividly when I close my eyes. I mean, I can just clearly hear the words and the sounds of the incident in my mind. I remember it just like it was yesterday. And I'll probably take that thought to my grave thinking about it. You can't come back home no more. No more. No more. Can't die in the accident. I miss him. As he is a good worker and good person. The sadness. And I saw all that right in front of me, and that shook me to the bone. I miss my brother. I, I wanted my brother back working with me, but I know what. I don't can do nothing. I don't can bring him back. I see the pain. I mean, the pain of losing a loved one over something that's just preventable. It's not going to let it happen. It's too important. Not on my, not on my watch. My own internal motivation that that will not happen again uh, anywhere around me and the people I'm with. And that's when I walked away from that. I said to myself, never again. There's always a push to get a job done. I have a certain amount I want to get done. I want to be, you know, make a profit for my boss. But, you know, the way you balance that is you always have to be safe no matter what the cost is. So I'm being productive, but safe. Our most successful jobs in terms of financial reward, making schedule, making profit, are also our safest jobs. When we say we want you to operate safely, it's not kind of wink, wink, but we want you to be fast and take the same shortcuts. No, it's we want you to be safe. Don't take risks, just don't do it. We just have to be safe, that, that's, that's the bottom line. If you plan for safety right up front, it's no different than any other aspect of your project. Safety doesn't slow production down at all. It only takes a second to go get that lanyard, tie off. Nothing could be loose, this has to be all tight. This, is, this saves lives. If it's not safe, we're not gonna let you do it. When you have an accident on the project, it affects the project 
far more than that, that shortcut that you may do once or twice. If you're safe, you can work with more confidence if you know that you're not going to fall. So I'd rather take the time out to make that extra precaution so that I can do a proper job. You're out here together to do a job. This, as a team, this is what you do, this is what I'm going to do. You watch out for me, I'm going to watch out for you, so everybody go home. Everyone looks out for everyone. You got to look out for other people as well as yourself. Because it might not be you creating the accident, it might be somebody else. Warning another person on the job site is what you should be doing. Forget about seniority, forget about pride. If you see me doing something wrong that's going to hurt somebody, or you or me, tell me right away. I don't put nobody in position to do it. I won't do it in a second. If you don't feel it, don't go up there. Anytime, that's any of us. If we don't feel it, we don't go up there. If somebody's working up above you like these guys are. If something happens up there, it's going to come down here. It's really about caring. It's really about giving a damn. The main thing is the people. We're like a big family out here. If you're working with a friend, it's a lot different than if you're working with a stranger. We're a family here. We take care of each other. We all watch each other's back out here. And we all look out for each other. I'm in charge to look out for him, and he looks out for me. Where they tell that man, you're messing up, you need to get down and rethink what you're doing. We look for one another, watch one another's back out here every day. We're a family, and um, we need to take care of one another. I was just like, I go home every day. I want my coworkers to go home every day. I have a family at home, and they expect me to come home every day. And I say a prayer every morning um, before I come out here that I will be as safe as I can be, and that everybody else will as well. Um, I worry about these guys. I worry about every one of them. And uh, that's the way it is. I want to build this building. Welcome to the team. 